Hi, and welcome again to Ivy English. I'm Karen, and I am Chris Gorski. Today is January eighteenth, and today we're going to hear part two of an article that we started yesterday, entitled "How Small Can Technology Get?" Well, it can get small to the point of micro, and then nano, and now it's getting really, really small. But we found that there's a problem. If it is so small that we can't even see it, how in the world do you power a nanobot? Well, as a matter of fact, there there is a weird solution for it. it. The solution is actually the 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 same way they powered the very earliest rockets, and it's way too complex to explain here. Uh, but it's it's just a simple kind of energy transfer, and it just kind of keeps going. Think of the problem: you're in a real chicken or egg situation because. If you want to power a microbot, you need a battery, but batteries can only get so small. So, if you want a more powerful battery, the battery has to be bigger. So now it's not a microbot anymore. Right? It's too big to be used for its intended purpose. So right now they're trying to experiment with this this old fashioned technology and see if it can't be adapted. But yeah, you're in a real tough situation. How do you power something so incredibly tiny? And we already have problems with batteries being inadequate for our large devices. You know, they can only be recharged so many times, and very often they can't be replaced. So batteries are definitely a very, very, very big consideration. I need to ask you: Are、yeah. you a person that lets your battery drain all the way down to like two percent before you charge, or are you a person that charges at like fifty percent? I basically just charge at night. So you'll just go all day, and then whatever it's at, it's、right. at, and then.、Uh, Because otherwise, it's not ready when I have to go to work in the morning. Yeah, I'm I'm a person that will charge at night, but I don't let my battery drop too much. I I suppose this is kind of related to how you drive your car. Do you kind of drive until you're out of gas, or do you refill it when it hits fifty percent? I suppose it's a similar situation. I refill it when there's about three lines left. So, <laughs> there we go. It carries <laughs> over, eh? <laughs> well. Yeah, well, no, because then I really look at the percentage for the battery. Apple actually already kind of keeps that in mind. So if you start, if you plug it in too early, it won't finish recharging until later. So it will be better for the battery. So they have already kind of done that automatically sometimes. But in theory, I suppose you should wait until it gets to around twenty. If you wait too long, it's not good for it. I know. I, I I dislike draining it all the way, and I hate charging it too soon. But at the same time, like maybe it's my nervousness. I I don't want to. Be in a situation where my battery is so low that I can't do what I need to do, and that includes like emergency video. Were I ever to come across a George Floyd situation, God forbid,、yeah. like I want to be there ready for that. That's, That's right, and you wouldn't have enough time to recharge it before whatever. Yeah, hold was on,、happening. wait. Let me charge really quick. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. So that's basically why I do it at night. Okay, so let's get back to our article. Our title: How small can technology get? Microbots might sound like something out of a science fiction novel. But they do exist and may eventually be as much a regular part of our lives as laptops and smartphones are today. In fact, the everyday potential for these little microbots is both surprising and exciting. In addition to being used in dangerous or inaccessible areas, microbots can be used in the manufacturing industry. They may one day be used to make surgical procedures less invasive. And they might even play a role in our everyday wellness. A group of researchers at the University of Pennsylvania is currently studying the possibility of microbots helping with our dental hygiene. They envision a tiny device that would essentially be a toothbrush, mouthwash, and dental floss in one. The researchers are working on a concept that involves a microbot changing into a structure with bristles that would remove dental plaque. And then transform again so that strings could slip between the teeth like floss. Further, an internal reaction within the microbot would produce a substance that could kill harmful oral bacteria on sight. The scientists working on this project think that this design has the potential to revolutionize dental care. With automated robots taking care of our teeth, there's no need to worry about forgetting to floss or not brushing long enough. This technology would also be ideal for people that lack mobility, since this system would be an entirely hands-free way to take care of our mouths. So, how soon do you think it will be before robots are cleaning our teeth? I have to say, I think that that's kind of a trivial use of this incredible technology. <laughs> I was thinking it was like weirdly invasive. I, that's funny. We、yeah. both have this interesting reaction to it. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say it's trivial. I, I really like the idea that it. 
It's especially thought of as a way of helping people with mobility issues. I think that's very noble. Yes. It just seems kind of creepy. I don't know. My issue was that one of the devices where I ran into the battery problem was an electric toothbrush. And I was using it fine for four years, and then suddenly it wouldn't recharge properly anymore. It would recharge. You could use it for like three minutes at a very high speed, and then it would stop. And so they built that in on purpose, that it kicks in at a certain age. And they say after, after that period, we do not, you know, we just don't offer any battery changing. I was so upset with them that I have gone back to using a regular toothbrush. I was just so irritated. It's, it's funny you mentioned this. I, I went through something not terribly long ago with my kind of uh, body hair trimmer. I'm, I'm like a, I'm a Western man. I have a lot of hair on me. And sometimes in the summer, it's too hot. You got to shave down. You got to keep clean, right? And my razor, which is really good quality, died. And so oh. I was like, well, it's time to buy a new one. It's kind of old. And this one, I, I bought a nice quality one, but it, it just – it would cut my skin. It oh, was, no. Yeah, it would hurt. Oh. So I said, I'm going back to my old one. I'm just going to replace it. I'll fix it. And they made it such a beast to replace this battery. Oh. And it, it like – you know what you know what happened? No. I got so mad at it that I was like, I will change this battery like no matter no what. No matter what. God, God couldn't get in my way right now. Yeah. And I went around and shopped it around. And I found this this Taiwanese guy. He's about the rudest man on earth. Oh no! But he could fix anything. And <gasps> oh, I give mean, me his number. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> he was as rude as can be, but boy, did he do a good job! And oh, uh, yeah, I actually do have his name card. I'll send it to you. All right, here we go. All right, our second sentence in the first paragraph. In fact, the everyday potential for these little microbots is both surprising and exciting. It's so funny. You were talking yesterday about the uh, what book were we talking about yesterday? Isaac Asimov's, I think it's The Fantastic Journey or something yeah. like that. Here we are. Here, this, this is exactly it. This is – microbots sound like something straight out of science fiction. That's because there have been science fiction books written about this exact topic. Exactly. Okay. Right, let's go to paragraph two. In addition to being used in dangerous or inaccessible areas, microbots can be used in the manufacturing industry. All right, so now we are trying to think of what are some good uses for these amazingly tiny robots. So when something's inaccessible, it just means a place that it's very difficult to get to or almost impossible to get to. Let's continue. They may one day be used to make surgical procedures less invasive. And that is actually very encouraging because... For a lot of things that we had to do to the body before, we had to cut you open. But now, for example, with lasers, you often don't have to cut somebody open. That's that's right. My brother, in fact, had a heart deformity and he, I mean, he nearly died from it. In the past, if they wanted to operate your heart, they had to crack the middle bone in your chest. It's right. called the sternum and yeah. pull your whole chest open. Right. When my brother needed to go on undergo emergency surgery, they just went in through the ribs, zapped it, and he was done. It's amazing to think how much simpler it was for him to recover versus people maybe 30, 40 years ago. From a broken rib bone. Yeah, yeah to, that's to pretty pull serious. your ribs open. That's right. All right, let's continue. And they might even play a role in our everyday wellness. And that sounds a bit less extreme. It's just the things that we do every day to make sure we stay healthy. And we'll get an example in the next paragraph. A group of researchers at the University of Pennsylvania is currently studying the possibility of microbots helping with our dental hygiene. So that's when I started thinking like, I can take care of my teeth, thank you. It also made me remember that when I was a kid, I got lots of cavities. And knock on wood, I haven't gotten any for a few decades. And I'm wondering, I think it's because I ate too much candy when I was a kid. We're talking about dental (laughs) hygiene. That's how we got on this. They're talking about one way we can use these very tiny uh, nanobots or microbots or whatever they use. Uh, namely for our dental hygiene. Hygiene means keeping something clean so it stays healthy. Dental means having to do with teeth. And there's something interesting about the word dent. It's related to the word tooth. If you start in Portugal and you go all the way to India, that is the whole area that is covered by Indo-European languages. Those are languages that are related either closely or distantly to English. And everywhere in every single one of those languages, the word for tooth is something like daunt. You know, I, I suppose in the were I to redo my life or maybe I'll have another life in the future, like just studying etymology. I it's love so doing it for the show. I just love digging into it. I just, how fascinating. But there's one thing I noticed about studying etymology. It's fascinating, 
but you burn out quickly. You get exhausted from it and you have to stop. And so that's why a lot of people, I don't think, make it a profession because you get exhausted constantly. There's no end to it. It's got to be extremely difficult. Yeah, it's just too much. There's so much stuff. The same is for studying the origins of Chinese characters, which is also fascinating because when I started looking into those, I found it was a picture of a guy with slaves and how he was treating the slaves. I go, oh, my God, that's in the writing system. Yeah, it's it, we, we stand on the shoulders of giants that we're able to look back in the past and know all this because of all the hard work of others. I mean, we're very fortunate. And we're carrying around a lot of information. So sort of like the word for uh, Lord means uh, master of the loaf. And we don't know that now, but if you look into the etymology, you're going to learn about Anglo-Saxon England. And if you look into the etymology of Chinese characters, it's the same thing. So anyway, dental is one of those words, dant. It's in pretty much every single Indo-European language that's been studied. And that's one way they're thinking of using these little microbots. Let's continue to our next sentence. They envision a tiny device that would essentially be a toothbrush, mouthwash, and dental floss in one. That's one of the things I do now as an adult that I did not do as a kid. I floss really regularly. My wife flosses daily, and she scolds me when I don't. I'll tell you the truth. I floss probably four or five times a week. I'll skip one day. I'm just a little lazy. But yeah, today I floss and it feels so good. There is this wonderful little invention in Taiwan. Somebody worked a long time to perfect it. It's called a brush pick. So it is like a toothpick. It's not those plastic, blue plastic things with a little piece of... The sword. It's not that. It is actually, it looks like a toothpick, but it's got a brush at one end. So you can use the toothpick end, but I never do. You use the brush as, as dental floss. And it's much better than dental floss. It's more thorough. And you just, you know, throw them away when you're done with them. You can use it maybe for two weeks. I think that's really great. I do that several times a day. You'll have to show this to me. I'm not familiar with what you're talking about. But, yeah, I'm uh, I'm big in the flossing now. I like getting in there and like, oh, yeah, we did a good job today. (laughs) I think it's in those stores that sell a little bit of everything. You know, those like three, four four stores. You can get them there. And I think it's a Taiwan invention. Japanese or Taiwan. But I use it several times a day. So that's it's really successful in that point. I, I do use it a lot. OK, on to the next sentence. The researchers are working on a concept that involves a microbot changing into a structure with bristles that would remove dental plaque and then transform again so that strings could slip between the teeth like floss. This sounds like a spider to me. Well, when I read this, I think of this wonderful little brush pick that I use. It already does most of that. Boy, that's uh, way, way more. That's a way happier th- thought a than like little spider solution. digging through your teeth. Yeah. yeah, and it's a low tech solution. You don't need any batteries. <laughs> so a bristle is kind of the the hard hairs on your toothbrush. Think of the hard hairs on pigs because that what what original toothbrushes were made out of. And for regular hair brushes as well. And plaque is the kind of stuff that forms on your teeth that is kind of a bunch of germ buildup, and they'll slowly eat away at your gums and make your teeth not so nice. Yeah, it's basically lime or calcium. All right, our next sentence. Further, an internal reaction within the microbot would produce a substance that could kill harmful oral bacteria on site. Now, again, I think there's an easier way to do it, a much lower tech solution. If you have the right kind of liquid, you know, you just and it's often included in toothpaste. So I'm just wondering, is it worth all of this, you know, high level technology to do this? This is the stuff that sounds like science fiction to me, like the less invasive surgery Okay, I can see that. I can envision that, right? It makes sense. It kind of is an extension of something that already exists. However, we have this microbot that transforms into a toothbrush, and then it has strings that go between your teeth like floss, and then it's also kind of like mouthwash. To me, this is the real science fiction. It feels like it's like doing all this magical stuff. Yeah, this is the science fiction to me. Here's a weird kind of vaguely off-topic memory. Uh, When I was a kid, I remember being encouraged to brush your teeth, and they'd have like a a dentist come to your school, and they would teach you how to brush. Yes, and And the red tablets. Yes, 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 and they were kind of showing you. I was really proud because like for some reason I knew how you were supposed to brush and it's not the normal way I brush. Like I just brush left and right. Yeah. But I knew you were supposed to like scrape Up and it down. off. <laughs> That's right. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to use my skills. And I like brushed it. And like the dentist was like, look at this child that brushes like a genius. A model. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, for, for some reason, it sticks out that they also gave us a gift. And they gave us this little toothbrush that had an alligator on it because alligators have those big teeth. Maybe it was a oh. crocodile. I, I don't recall. Uh-huh. 
And for some reason, I was very attached to this toothbrush. I really liked it. And I think it's one of those things, as an adult, we kind of overthink, or excuse me, we no longer appreciate how important being able to brush our teeth actually is and how you really have to teach kids why this is important and something they fight you with and they don't want to do it. And so they have special toothbrushes and they have special toothbrush flavors, toothpaste flavors. And types of toothpaste because you can't swallow it. That's right. And so it's just one of these little things that we really don't give thought to. And it's funny that you mentioned this low-tech solution. But even then, we still need all these other ways just to get people starting to brush in Mm -hmm. the first place. That's right. And that red tablet thing, some time ago, I went to have my teeth cleaned at the dentist, and I used one of those red tablets. And I thought, gosh, I haven't seen this in second grade. (laughs) Did you Do you do that move when you go to the dentist? You make sure to brush brush your teeth and floss like just before? I would do that anyway, I have to say. (laughs) Yeah, worried about bad breath. Well, worried about bad breath and and like – It's like going to a test. It's like you have five minutes before the test. You're going to crack open your vocabulary book. Even though you normally study, you're normally a good student. You crack that book open one last second, right? Just before you go to the dentist, you got to brush and floss. Like otherwise, he's like, "Mm, Mr. Gorski, I I noticed something in your teeth. But even if you do that, it's not going to take off the plaque that has accumulated over the past year. So you can do it, but you're still going to be exposed. One thing that was interesting, it's slightly off topic, but one thing I learned from my last visit was I am influenced by being right-handed. And my left teeth were all fine because that's easy for my right hand to get to. I was using an electric toothbrush back then. But there was this one area that's really awkward, and they said, I think you have to change hands. Because that's interesting. that whole area of your teeth had a lot of plaque. Huh, that's funny. Now, now I'm left-handed when I write. However, I'm right-dominant when I do certain activities, power activities. So I'll use chopsticks in my left. I'll use a, use a pencil in my left hand. But if oh. I'm throwing a ball, I, I use my right hand. Baseball, I can switch hit. So I have kind of what's what is called cross dominance. Oh. And I brush my teeth with my right. This oh. makes me wonder because I do consider my left hand my main hand. Yeah. However, power things are done with my right hand. I wonder if I would have a similar thing. I think next time I go to the dentist, I'm going to ask. Like, what about the right side of my mouth? Do I clean the left better than the right? It's funny that they could even notice. I mean, of course they can notice that. I just... It's just one of those funny things that until you're told that people know about it, you never think about it. Which tells you about the importance of feedback. Yeah. We won't find that by ourselves. Okay, we have one paragraph left. The scientists working on this project think that this design has the potential to revolutionize dental care. That's pretty straightforward. If this works, we can really improve and make a huge change in dental care, taking care of your teeth. With automated robots taking care of our teeth, there's no need to worry about forgetting to floss or not brushing long enough. This will make us even lazier. (laughs) <laughs> and even less attentive. So I like the – there was a technology when my niece was young that encouraged children to brush long enough. And from what I recall, dentists recommended that you brush your teeth for three minutes. However, people might brush their teeth for 45 seconds, yeah. maybe 90 seconds. So there was a toothbrush that had like a pop song that was roughly three minutes on yeah, it. And right. so they would play the pop song and brush their teeth. And you brushed your teeth for as long as the pop song played. I thought that was a very clever solution. I think that's very clever. You can use that for showers, too, to know how long to shower. Okay? This technology would also be ideal for people that lack mobility since this system would be an entirely hands-free way to take care of our mouths. Now, this is something I really like. Uh, I'm a gamer. If you guys know me, I enjoy video games. And one of my very favorite things that a video game company has done is create various ways for people that are in wheelchairs or are paralyzed to still enjoy video games. They can control entire modern video games using their eyes, their nose, tongue, and breath. And I think this is a phenomenal way to use technology. There's not a lot of profit in it. Man, what a nice thing to do. Microsoft has always been very good about that. There's a lot of nasty things you could say about Microsoft. Their controllers are not one of them. Yeah, and when you look at a handicapped person, you just think, oh, that's a handicapped person in a wheelchair. But they're just a person. They just happen to be in a wheelchair. So how soon do you think it will be before robots are cleaning our teeth? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We have a few (laughs) questions for you. One, what can we learn about computers from the first paragraph in day one? A, people prefer smartphones or laptops to desktop computers. B, 
B. The earliest computers used to require much more space. We've got the right answer here. There we go. B. So we're going to skip C and D and go on to two. Which of the following statements is not true about microbots? A. They may one day be affordable for most people. B. Compared to nanobots, they are quite large in size. C. They are so small that they cannot be seen without a microscope. This is not true about microbots. This is true of nanobots. Okay, number three. What is a potential benefit of teeth brushing microbots mentioned in day two? Letter A. It assists people with mobility problems. That's the correct answer. But what else do we got here? Okay, it is less expensive than regular toothbrushes. No, no I don't reckon that. Doubt that. <laughs> Letter C. It allows people to clean their teeth in their sleep. That sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is actually one of the sentences I use when I teach young children. Before, like I always create improbable situations. I I go to sleep before I brush my teeth,、ah. and that doesn't make sense, right? So when you translate it accurately, it fits. So this is a very appropriate sentence for my classroom. I have to confess to doing that sometimes because、really? I know that I'm going to get up to go to the bathroom or something. So I'll brush my teeth after I get up. <laughs> <Right> . Sometimes <laughs> it happens. All right. So D, it can stop any bacteria from going in our mouths. Now that's a little bit too powerful. I don't know that's going to happen. Okay. So number four. According to the passage, which of the following functions of teeth brushing microbots is not included? Okay, we've got four pictures here. And A, we've got just a boy and a girl standing at a bathroom sink, and they are brushing their teeth. And B, it looks like we have a young man, and he is using mouthwash. And C, we've got a woman using、uh, floss, dental floss. And in letter D, we have a dentist checking the teeth of that little girl. I think from picture A. So we still have to go to the dentist. In other words, so D is the correct answer. That's all we have time for today. Tune in next time. We'll see you then. Bye bye. Bye bye.